for Digital Chaos? What really like messes with their draft? Is there a certain type of hero that does messes with uh, DCs, like stopping the, the pressure that they can throw out? Or? Well, I guess it's just going to come out right now, and it's going to be the Life Stealer, another classic, one of his most played heroes. Life Stealer Fad, yes. Yeah, he's like all physical. It's tough. Very They're, tough matchup for him. They have global as well, so it's like great initiation. You know, you jump in there, you global. Maybe you just don't go on the Sven, and you try and find pickoffs instead. Remaining. Yeah. He, the thing is, he can work out his whole team, and they Five have Darkseer too. Like, Darkseer remaining. is really good at, like, stopping a jump on someone. Guardian Greaves Builder too. PL has been banned. They do expect the support. Carry last. I think Slark's actually pretty good. But I'm trying to think of other matches that are good versus Weaver or Bat Rider. Weaver is also pretty good here. Those two are probably the most common pickups versus Bat Rider. We see Jug sometimes, but Jug also not bad. I mean, any of those anti Bat Rider safe laners seem here. Yeah. Left themselves very open. I mean, that's the thing that's cool about this draft, too, is that, like, it, it feels like Quap needs to roam around a lot, so DK is going to have pretty free reign to push mid and then eventually take that tower when she leaves. So as long as you pick somebody survivable, they'll be good to go. Accurate. Yay! Who's <laughs> going to beat Maybe they want, I think they want more of a melee hero, though, because I think when you have Darkseer, you want to make use of the Ion Shell, so heroes that can, like, get in there, up close, personal, Slark and Jug, I would prefer. Also because um, Jug can build Manta, I think he holds extra value, because you are Silencer. Or, like, Blink Abyssal late game against Quap too. Yeah. That type of style. I, I like that a lot. Jug sounds great. I mean, Ramses has a huge hero pool, though. Yeah. And it still could be Lil Hero. It could be Troll, too. Troll's also pretty... He's not a good matchup for his bat rider, but he owns Life Stealer. Like Life Stealer would be useless. But not so good for I think Bat's actually the I think Forever is very proficient. Well, VP getting down to the wire here. Maybe not so confident. Maybe it was the PL that they were hoping to take in that last pick. But as it stands, it is instead going to be the Nyx Assassin. Okay, so they have swapped it up, and it will be Ramsey's Sven. I mean, Sven, Gary, I suppose, more expected it that it would be Ramsey's hero last. Wait, that DC banned out last. Pulling the old Swaparoo, the anti Nyx, and <laughs> the anti Quap. Yeah, that uh, that's pretty great. And obviously, against the Bat Rider, it's amazing. Um,. I don't know. Do you do you like the pick? Do you think that they do enough early? Like they have kind of setups for impale with with glimpse back and stuff. But what's your thoughts? Who's draft do you like more? Trying to think about it. Like if I didn't see the, I would say if I if I didn't see the teams, I probably like VPs more. I think life was going to struggle a lot to damage. Because of the, all this armor, coming. he's a decent matchup versus Nyx, but he's actually not going to be versus Nyx much of the time. Nyx is a support role, here. and then Pasha is also going to have a really good time, I think, because I, how does Silencer zone out the Darkseer? I don't think you can. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be really tough. Um, well, game number two, getting ready to begin. DC versus VP, and still the favorites to take this one. I'm assuming for most people. All around the world are VP, who have just proven to be so hard to deal with and have also put together a really strong draft here in this one. Um, so Bulba, he's going to lay down one of these wards over here to the side. Got a nice little block off on that camp. And we will see if they're able to make it happen. Um, big early movements. Last time around, it was the clockwork that was important to make things happen mid with the ogre also uh, babysitting that viper. Where do you see these supports rotating to and roaming it? Or is that even going to happen in this game? Just babysitting mid? Yeah. I don't really think you can roam too much. Disruptor is mediocre at roaming. <laughs> Nick Sesson, mediocre too. I think maybe both of them combined, but I think they just want to make sure this bat ride has a really tough game. Like you don't want him to get BKB this game. Like you want to prevent that, not at all costs, but you just enough pressure on him in the early game so that you slow down his blink, which will slow down the mid game, and then slow down his BKB. Okay. 
because the Nyx will destroy them. Nyx and Darkseer. That's a, that's a great combo that they have. Um, and on top of that, they had the Disruptor Static Storm. But all of this gets countered by PKP. Ooh, Smoke was early from Solo to place the Observer the Ward begins. in the middle lane. And then perhaps to get the chick to kill his to be able to do it. I'll take that dream. This would be such a great way to help out his mid laner and see if Abed is actually he is bringing something out right now and they're not gonna be fully expecting this. He's gonna be going for the block instead on this Queen of Pain. Oh no, the chicken. I think it is gonna be going down here if he scouts it out in time and we'll see if he can get the range on both hits. One, two, goes down, and that's a salve as well. Nice play from Solo. That is some value out of your smoke. I really dislike it some, when some teams in early game, they don't buy the smoke early. Because smokes are so valuable in competitive play. And having starting the cooldown immediately at the start is really good. And starting the cooldown at the start and getting a chicken kill and a good observer ward down, <laughs> that's the dream. Yeah, all the above. No one did get pushed back by the cogs, which means that uh, he's going to be low on mana through his first couple of waves until he gets that bottle brought all the way out. We'll see if Boba can get a courier snipe too. Not likely. <laughs> but yeah, it is just going to be a little bit pushing back and forth here as Lil has moved into the mid lane to help out a little bit more. Well, Abed's lane secured at least for a little bit. I, s I said that last game, and he got demolished. It's not Jinx Abed. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, it, it certainly wasn't good for him last time around. And for him, he's also being sort of bullied around a little bit here by Solo. Uh, that still are able to keep that Bat Rider back at least a little bit. And they're keeping the pressure on no one. Making sure that the, even though um, he's got the help from Lil, it's not the easiest time in the world. What pressure, says his 18 goes in one cell. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He's got a hell of a lot of regen. That's the way to do it. Dragon Blood. Okay, so babysitting mid going on. No one actually... He's fine. Okay. He, he was sacrificing his HP for CS, which is completely fine when you have that much regen. I always get so nervous when I see those health bars get down low, particularly with the blinking hero like Quap, but with only level 2, it would have been pretty big death there, uh, probably jumping into tower range. Pasha able to get a good amount up top as well. 6 CS for him so far uh, in this off lane, and it's not quite the same level of uh, kill potential here as you see in the bottom lane with well, the Salter. That, that's still sorry. one. Yeah. That's the thing. And that was with Solo starting off in mid lane at the, at the very early levels, which is generally when you would expect him to be able to get level two. But like with that TP down to the bottom lane, he's been doing a very, very good job, Solo. Coming in, taking him down. First blood drawn by Ramses. Kinetic Field and Thunderstrike, more than enough to punish that Bat Rider. That's one of those weird moments that you actually would have wanted to skill Flame Break instead. He was he he was uh, up in the air. He was flying because of Firefly, but he actually couldn't move at all. He couldn't clip people because of the uh, the Kinetic Field. So if he pushes back the spin, maybe he can get a kill. I haven't seen that build before, but I think in this one particular instance, it would have been better. Okay. But uh, I don't even know if it's worth the sacrifice not having Firefly at 2, because then you can't even jump. Which is what Forev is doing. That's such a tough lane. And you might even end up seeing one of these other heroes rotate in. It looks like Bulba is going to try and do whatever he can in this lane and pick up some levels. Uh, just probably the right thing to be doing. But even he's going to have some trouble as Solo keeps on throwing out that Thunder Strike. Mid lane, it's Abed who's been left kind of completely alone at this point. But he's having a decent time. Although, as I say that, he's going to get caught out. Does have Blink. And a salve, but is holding on to it for the moment. That's not even a chance of contesting form in a room. Uh, Bulba battery assaulted is going to be running down solo at least a little bit for the moment, but with Forever only level two, will not have any way to push him back in again. Ramses does have another stun here, and with the kinetic field already laid down, he threw it onto the Bat Rider, almost can connect onto him. He's so low HP, 35 in fact, but will be able to make the escape. Close call. Yeah, surprised he went for a bat there, but uh, Rev has a little bit of extra speed. Well, mid lane, Quap continuing to max out the dagger. Um, I don't know. Uh, what do you think about this since it's kind of no one constantly staying topped off on regen anyways? 
Well, then you have zero pressure, and you can't. Oh, I guess so. you, the thing is, you can't outlast that quelling blade. That's that's a big problem, I think, in this matchup for him. Like, yeah, you might have equal damage. Dragonite actually at 67, and I bet at 78. So I bet has 11 more damage. Both quelling blade, no one should generally win out on the CS score, and you need pressure from someone. But what coming in? There are a lot of heroes. Now battery salt pulling them back in there. Although the stun came out, that does mean that no one will escape. With the two rotations mid, not bearing fruit for DC. What a player, no one. How do you not die in that situation? And look at a CS now. Yeah. Um, they also spotted the smoke movement coming in from Dubu and Bulba, and they're actually going to run right into him. Solo can get the pullback if he wants to. He only has one point in glimpse, a little bit outside of range, actually. So that does mean that Bulba will make the escape, but now you have the two heroes mirroring their rotations, and. DC, they're going to end up being pulled back in yet again. Can Forever stay alive long enough for the rest of his teams to get here and get in range? It looks like the answer is no. The Cogs connect on to two, but that's just going to be more farm for Ramses. This is, they're just not really able to make stuff happen with these heroes like you were talking about. It's kind of hard with them. And no one is actually just so good, though. Like, his, his build, I think, at the start uh, kind of won him this lane. Remember when people always used to just buy... You know, you get pulled a couple of tangos, whatever, and then you bring yourself a self. No one didn't do that. He had three sets of regen. <laughs> so, like, Co-op, yeah, you can spend all your mana harassing him, but then no one's going to come out ahead on CS, which is exactly what he did here. That's that's the thing. This dude is just so experienced in the mid lane that he knows all these matchups inside out. He can go for these different sort of builds. And, I mean, it doesn't sound like that big of a deal, right? Having three sets of regen at the start. But I think in this particular match, especially with the way that it started with Clockwork just manhandling him and burning all his mana away, he should have had a way more difficult time. But right now, whacking on a tower. How are that have HP? Look at this guy. Dragonite player through and through, making Radiant's it work. And even forced the Queen of Pain out of lane. So, everything coming up right now, Virtus Pro. Uh, is there any lane that's going, like, really good? The Lifestealer is still getting decent CS for himself. Uh, is that something that, you know, is sort of what DC need to fall back upon? Mason, well, they don't, they don't care about him. They have the Dragonite armor and they have the Sven armor. So, like, yeah. he And they have Surge to even kite the open wounds if he even wants to cast it. So, I, I didn't like the pick at the start. And it, without their other cores doing well, like, without the Batrider lasso for the Infest Bomb, how are they going to get kills? And with Queen of Pain not dominating the mid lane, I mean, she's not doing poorly, but I, I wouldn't say she's doing well. She's kind of in that in-between phase. 5.5 out of 10. It looks like the Bat Rider 2 is trying to go back for the drum, so it's not. It's going to be a long time before that best bomb comes out, or at least a brace, uh, you know, going in for the, the tranquils. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, about seven and a half minutes in, two and zero is the score, but it's really the difference in net worth that's pronounced at this point. Shooting almost at that 4K mark. I think also the, the tower HP too. Like yeah. mid is at half HP. Bottom tower is two-thirds HP for Digital Chaos. So there are, they, they are... They're going to start losing objectives very soon. And they need time. Bat Rider needs to get his blink dagger. And Co-op needs any item that she can get. Veil pretty much. I would say is imperative in this game, actually. Yeah. She needs the armor. And she, they definitely need more magic damage versus this lineup. So, yeah. Well, maybe something can be made of it down here bottom. They're bringing in Boba. A good Cogs pushback, actually. He's going to be able to keep Forever alive for the moment, and we'll see if they can find any more. Ramses is there as well. He's in the area right now with the Battery Assault, but they don't quite have level 6 yet on Forever. Only level 4. And so all they can do is keep him alive while mid lane, more action of Bruin. The catch was almost there. Abed taking the DOT, but it's not enough to kill him off, and he had the 12 stick charges anyways. Well, I think that might be his lost tower, though. Yeah. No one gonna push the tempo. He has stick charges too. Uh, Could have popped them to bring fire and maybe push this out a little bit quicker, but they'll still be there in time. I'm pretty sure. They want to come and contest. Actually, uh, they'll keep their tower alive oh, for now. Oh, bet actually didn't go all the way home. Just got a bounty room. I uh, used those stick charges too while dropping everything, it looks like. Yeah, he needs to stay around in this middle lane. Tower's at a quarter HP and just constantly going low. But it's still a little bit of time up on Dragonite, but I don't think he's going to be able to get that last hit on the tower. Midas on Lifesteal. All right. We're doing it. I mean, if you need to catch up, right? <laughs> well, he's up all right. Yeah. 
I think it, I, I do like Midas versus the the Darkseer. You can just instantly Midas his creep and not have to deal with the Iron Shell with Ice. But it does slow your game, which is already a little bit slow. I guess he's maybe trying to match the time of Bat Rider, which is kind of cool. Like, you don't want to go armor and like, oh, I'm ready to infest. And then Bat Rider's like, I need Blink Dagger and about 1500 gold, and I'll see you in about five minutes. And he's like, okay, well, I could have just farmed for Radiant's another five minutes with my Midas. So, uh, yeah, makes sense. Okay. We, we did see. Uh, oh, the Search forward, looking for it. Do they realize? Oh, that would have been. Oh no! <laughs> that would have been the Midas too. That would have been <gasps> devastating. Yeah, look at this. They placed down a, an observer ward in the mid lane here to try and see if they could snatch it off, and then over here as well uh, in the jungle. But now Radiant with Mason on top of Asha, he'll always have surge to get away, so doesn't really need to be that concerned. I wonder if they rolled low in their damage. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Oh no, this is going to be Queen of Pain dead most likely. Solo is there, and they pull him back in. They will pop the glyph right now for the tower, but I don't think they have intentions of saving this. I don't think so. I don't think you can. Prev still a thousand gold away from his blink dagger. Uh, like we talked about, the Midas is done for Life Stealer now, so he's going to start to accelerate a little bit more in terms of his gold. And I guess that it is really just waiting for that that blink and. Uh, Infest bomb before any type of big play comes out for DC. Uh, but is Clockwork like I guess the other hero that can maybe find like a wraparound and kill? I don't know. It's tough. Come on, ooh. I, I guess that's the problem. <laughs> no. Disruptor is not even vulnerable because he can just glimpse him back. So what's VP looking to do now then? They've taken the first tower. Uh, get Nick Six. This okay. first. Once they get Nick Six, they can open up the map a little bit more. I would say they can. Probably make another attempt at the Bat Rider before he gets his Blink Dagger. Or they could just farm up with Mask of Madness Fen. That's also a pretty good option for them because he is excellent at taking out stacks. And look at his stack. It might be like a six stack. Wait, how many is that? One, two, three, four. It's only a four stack right now. So let's see if he gets his stack off. Only a four stack. Well, he is going to finish it off now, and it looks like they actually uh, didn't keep Nyx around to get those levels. He's down bottom, where a lot of DC is, and Solo actually is going to scout out Dubu, uh, as well as Bulba. The glimpse comes out. He was able to trap him in the cog zone with the flame break pushback. This might be another plus two for Dubu. And something going right for DC. Much needed. First kill of the game. Hey. It's been a really slow-paced one. Yeah. We have minus one side, a bat rider on the same side who doesn't really have any items, and then you have a Sven on the other side, so kind of expected, I would say. But Radiant's middle let's tower see is under attack. what is going to happen soon. Darkseer has mech is under attack. if he wants to buy it right now. Uh, Sven doesn't have blink dagger, but I say once Sven gets me, they can actually start making moves. Dragon Knight has armly completed, so he's going to move. This is the game, so I'm about to start to get up. Don't you worry, Gabe. Oh, baby. Well, there's one thing. They already find one kill, and Dubu did end up getting the intel for that, but he's going to pay for it. They find another pick off here. Ramses with the Echo Saber newly completed. So, a one for one exchange. I noticed that, that Ramses really likes the Agi Treads, he likes that attack speed. Hmm. Over double dipping into the strength for the God strength. It's pretty unusual. Oh God, we'll see if it pays off here. Abed. Oh, Man, look at how much damage he took. And that wasn't even with God strength used. It's just running at him with a stun. It's make, making him live a life of fear, man. <laughs> I guess there is a little bit of maybe some mentality issues in there as well. You sort of. Make sure that people know you're always going to be coming at them. I mean, really, what did they use there? Just wall. Yeah, I don't really think they need walls to win the fight right now. They're pretty far ahead. So I think it's a, it's a good statement to be made. Yeah. You also, like, make them blow shrines when they don't really want to. Like, I've been using that top shrine in the fight or to, to heal up from that. So would you trade a wall for shrine? That's pretty good. Yeah. A lot longer cooldown on the shrine, that's for sure. And the tilt aspect. There you go. <laughs> Uh, always underrated. Well, no one. DD Rune on the Dragonite with that Dragon Form enabled. The tower did not stand a chance, so two tier ones taken. And still, Sven continues to farm away. 
Everything is going good for VP here. I, I don't really see what it is that DC can do until they get those big items up. And Blake's almost up. Though. They're almost there, yeah. It's just a problem because they don't have the infrastructure to also deal with the deal with the Nyx assassin. How do you deal with it when your supports are broke and your cores are broke? Yeah. Well, and it, not only that too, but maybe that initiation fully gets turned back around as well with the Nyx assassin there and having Spike Carapace to just interrupt that rider. That would be sick. Okay, here they go. Forever. Let's see the smokes. It's time, buddy. It is time. Now, VP, are they going to put themselves in a position to get picked off, too? Because if they're all together, it still feels like this net worth advantage could be kind of hard to deal with. And Pasha does have that mechanism completed. And he is TPing up top. Radiant this could be a tough fight for DC, nonetheless, in spite of having those initiation items. They know something's up, though. No one's showing on the Dyer's map at all. They have pretty deep wards, too, and they use a scan to cover mid. Dyer's so let's see. Is Lil going to be able to pop the smoke? He actually isn't sure which direction it's coming from, but he knows it's coming from either the north or Dyer's just south of that. Has fallen. They're walking forward again. Bulba is there. The smoke breaks at least once. They drop down a ward, and now a uh, sentry as well. So they are going to have eyes on Lil in just a second. We can see if they reveal them there. Look at Batrider loads on the top side. Oh, he's looking. He's waiting. He wants this one badly. No one is going to be there. Abed as well. They jump forward, catch onto him as well. Global follow-up. It's the perfect initiation. Is it the perfect target, though? Can they kill off no one? The answer is yes. And now Ramsey's left with nowhere more to go. Static Storm is down. VP, they're going forward. Bulba being the one who's going to sacrifice himself slightly. Already taken down again. Another vacuum back in for Rev. Is he going to be able to get out now? They're going to surge away. VP do not want to take this fight. If they can avoid it, and Pasha might be the one who gets left behind. Open Wounds is there. Quick couple right clicks and the kill. DC back on the map. Excellent angle from approaching the Dragon Knight right there. That was really well played by them because they kind of... Excuse me. They, they feigned a maneuver from the south because you saw the clockwork uh, move up forward to place a ward. So when they're up in that jungle area, you expect him to come from the trees right above him just because it's very unusual for them to be separated that far out. And then th what they actually did was, yeah, they faded the maneuver to the south and they wrapped around north with the with the lasso. And they weren't actually ready for that. So force way too far away. Yeah. They, they needed to interrupt the, the quap combo. You can't stop the life zone. He's already made. So the only thing they can stop is Quap getting all her spells off. He was able to. Yeah, and it was enough to blow him up, showing that there's still decent damage on DC when they have all those ultis online. Uh, as far as VP is concerned, is that something that you need to be pretty concerned about at this point? Like your Dragonite dying? Um, I w didn't quite see what the interaction was with his armlet, if it was on at that time or not, but... No, he was able to get it off. I think what, yeah. what he might need is a hood or a PKB, which it looks like he's going for. Just some way so he doesn't die in the front line. But the problem is, if he builds tanky, then they'll just go on Ramses. So... What the... Big... Back... Be a shrine? Maybe? Rev is checking it. They know it's coming. Oh, man, if... That was so close, so low. He actually does get the glimpse though, and there's the Static Storm, and it pulled the Life Stealer in as well, so he's gonna be stuck in this also, and can they catch him out? Can they kill him off? He's gonna get the Rage TP away. That would've been huge. He almost got back. That was so close. Well, and now, he's taking this fight without Firefly, without Lasso available. A lot harder for DC. They will have Hookshot. Maybe Bulba can go for a snipe here. Pasha is trying to be that gatekeeper. In for the angle. Lil going for the impale. Pump fakes as well. They might scout him out. They wrap around. Lil is there again to break it out. And Bulba off to the side. Jumps in. Can he get it? He's already down. Aegis is on the ground as well, but no one picks it up. And Bulba is going to drop. Sonic Wave comes out as well. They're able to get that lasso down onto one. That's no one still in a little bit of trouble, but do they have enough damage? Dyer is here. Abed is out of mana, and Lil able to make the escape. He's back in again for one. That's solo down as well, and no one. Can they kill him off twice? With the surge away, I think the answer is no. But DC, they strike back in a big way. Still pretty good fight for them. Nice play by Bulba. He went so far around. He kind of suspected that they might have a ward over there with the way that he was moving. He went so far to the left side, and there were two heroes trying to block his hook, uh, hook shot. Yeah. That's really impressive, definitely. Yeah. That was a very nice play from Bulba. Set it all up. 
Oh, Lil actually getting slowed down by the ghost there for a second. He has blink dagger already in yeah. arcanes. He had that for the, for the Roche fight. Yeah. Oh my goodness, he's far. He did get a solo. Oh, Pasha trying to run away from there. Can he make his escape? Bulba's chasing him down pretty swift, pretty quick. And is going to be able to catch him. Push back. He losing another. Never mind. Ramses comes in mad as hell and takes him down. <gasps> oh, man. That's a pretty big guy. Hello, Mick. <laughs> it was looking so good for a second there. But Sven hit very hard. 10,000 net worth on him. And has that blink dagger done. And I know, about halfway to the BKB as well. BKB is going to be an issue. A big issue, I would say. Now, it looks like Abed actually is going to be going for the BKB as well. And Solo pulls him back in for the Static Storm. Can they get the rest of these heroes here in time? Ramsey shows up, blinks in. Do they have the counterplay, though? It's actually going to be Ferev lassoing Ramsey's, trying to make sure he escapes. And, oh. He's getting pretty aggressive. He's going to be pulled back in. A vacuum and a stun from no one. Rev still able to live for this for the moment, but no. In the end, that Thunderstrike was too much. The end. Good then. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it keeps on being like these very scrappy little engagements, and it always feels like Virtus Pro maybe a little bit more mobility, maybe a little bit more... Uh, just like you were saying, ability to turn a fight around with like that Dark Seer mechanism and vacuum and all that. BKB number one. So how big of an issue is this? What's the what's the sort of order of operations of the fight now? Uh, like it's still going to be no one like sieging the tower, right? Uh, the order of operation will be similar, except DC are going to try them try to kill them before they get the BKBs off. And VP's gonna try and stop them from killing them before the BKB's up. Like drop Static Storm, drop your, uh, do the counter initiation with Vacuum Wall. So I am skeptical of DC's chances to actually kill them before the BKB comes out. Especially if War Cry's up. I think that top fight, something smart that Ramsey's did also was pre-cast a War Cry. Normally you cast it reactively because it's not that high of uptime. Oh, Lil. Again, really good play. Freaking smoke. But precasting the war cry, making sure that the fight would go well with high armor on all their heroes. Yeah, before the lasso comes out. That's the important part. If you don't get your spells off before lasso, you're just gonna die. Especially uh, your armor. You're, it's not like past. Oh, nice hook there. Able to thread the needle and make his way around the bat rider. So no one's gonna be pulled in again for the moment. They do have Lil in the area. So they're pump faking that, and the BKB finally comes out as well as the Surge Away. Radiant so one charge of it down. Five. You could tell that he didn't want to pop it. Like, I don't want to pop it. I don't want to pop it. <laughs> okay, I don't, I'd rather pop it than be dead. Dyer's the right mentality. You like the uh, the Deso pickup for Lifestealer as well? Sort of the, the answer to the war cry in a lot of ways. He's still well in the positives, though, with war cry. War cry is 20 armor. Deso is not even cool with that, so. Um, it does help with killing the supports, and it does help killing, the, bursting them in that time frame before they pop in. I think that's the most important part about that. Time. You also have Dubu who's picked up a medallion, so there's more minus armor here to try and at least make things slightly better. Uh, but again, make, making all of that happen onto one hero, it feels like you're investing a lot into them, and if it doesn't work, then the rest of the team fight's just over. Yes. But yeah, how do you? Uh, do you need to sort of wait for like that next Aegis to come back around for VP now, or what's? Uh, you still think they feel pretty comfortable just pushing down each of these lanes? Just push down each of these lanes and let Nick do his thing. Nick Sue is not died yet this game. So that uh, he's he's doing exactly what he needs to do. He's moving around the map elusively, popping smokes, getting vision on heroes, getting easy solo pickoffs when he can, and. Just setting up generally very well for his team. And Lil is, I would say, probably the most important player for their team right now. Like, he, him being able to make sure that his cores get farmed by where he leaves. Like, look at where he's scouting right now. He's, like, out in the back looking for a potential wraparound angle from the lasso and the lifestealer bomb that they've been doing. But now he's like, okay, DC are just a bunch of wusses. They're going to stay inside the base because they don't want to lose a game right now. And VP are like, okay.
okay, well, we need to get more advantage we can while they're still stuck in there. But he, he's scouting out from the potential wraparound angles from DZ because the fight could go really well. Blink Lasso into tons of bursts like from Quap before the BKBs pop off. That's that's the dream. But mm -hmm. if he gets his eyes on the Queen of Pain uh, or it stuns her before her BKB, let's say, or if he gets his eyes on the Fat Rider, this fight will go so well. Global comes out. Oh, Bulba the hook shot in the perfect timing. They're able to find those two heroes, and Ramsey's waiting to jump back in the vacuum wall. The stun's there a little bit late. He's actually able to find the lasso for Rev, making the plays to keep his team alive. If they win it, this would be such a big combo for them. Mason is going to be dropped down, though. And Abed managing to get out for the moment. Can he escape Pasha? It looks like the answer is yes. That could have gone so much worse for DC. Well, the cores were sitting back. That's the thing. Uh, they were they almost set up with a big Dark Sears uh, vacuum walls, vacuum wall and the storm wall combo. That was really close, but Forev was even on the lookout for it. He lasted with the Sven as immediately as soon as he blinked in. But still, they had to blow what two ultimates I think at the start to kill those two supports, which was pretty good. But they still did get some spells off. It was also a disruptor buyback in the midst of that. So, uh, Solo does that a lot, but that's fine. He has GPM talent. What <laughs> else? <laughs> nice. Good stuff. Um, yeah, it did show again uh, also the power of, you know, Darkseer Greaves in that. Um, being able to, you know, stay, uh, get out of the global and then, you know, return the, the damage in kind. Get the turnaround happening. Um, BKB charges down to eight seconds here as well. When those charges do start to get down to the five second mark, is that something to be pretty concerned about for Virtus Pro, or is it like enough burst damage that it doesn't really matter? If Quap gets bigger, it's a problem. Because she's the one that can just make it. Right now, she's not big enough. It doesn't really matter that much. He can still kill people in five seconds, that's for sure. It's back to Rev. Chase was coming home well. Still aren't really able to much more than take down those tier twos. Roche respawning in two and a half minutes now. So a relatively long respawn time. What you said when, when Quap gets big, like is it we're waiting for, for Shiva's guard or is it like this Lincoln Sphere that's enough? Does she need to actually like output a lot of damage or just stay alive for a long time in the fights? So that's the bigger concern. Uh, she just needs to be threatening. Threatening means killing people before BKB okay. or being able to blink on the back lines and kill the disruptor in the in the Nyx without being able to do it without having to expend that many spells, like uh, there's many ways she can be threatening. She can hit level 25 and just be a tank. That's also a pretty good way to be uh, threatening as Queen of Pain. So yeah, annihilating the supports and, or just being unkillable while doing damage, which is 25 or like you know if she gets like a scythe or something like that or orchid, they can kill the Nyx very fast. If she get a Lincolns, she can doesn't have to worry about these two targeted stuns coming out from this man and the Dragon Knight. Yeah. Look at Lil, he's right there again. He just he knows, knows exactly where they're coming from. He also scouted out that the war just got taken there, so he realized they're all in that spot and well they might be actually going for this. No one with the haster and is walking in. Dubu not gonna get caught there. That looks like the rest of DC retreating back home. Make sure that they're all fine and dandy. They think that Roche is a fight now, though. Or it could be up. VPR playing like this. Yeah. I guess that's the nice part about Clockwork, too. Making that scout happen constantly. And this is leaving a good amount of room for Abed to also uh, farm up and the lane push. How close is that lifestealer to the AC? He's only 1,400 gold away. Yeah, he's actually starting to hit pretty hard. His Midas has paid off for him, I would say. It's been a relatively slower game for him. So he's... He hasn't, like, died. Like, it, there wouldn't have been a fight where if he went another item instead of Midas, he, they would have won the fight. I think that's that's kind of the ultimate test for the Midas. It's not how many times he used it. Or, or if it paid for itself back in whatever amount of uses or whatever amount of time. It's, would you have won a fight, a big team fight, uh, with a different item instead of Midas? Okay. And he's passed that test. Midas test. Like some sort of chemistry thing. I love that. Will it turn to gold if I touch it? <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly not turning to gold right now is going to be Silencer brought down. He gold for dead. another team. That's true. He passed the Midas test. <laughs> <laughs> the chemistry Midas test to the Silencer. He absolutely doesn't have buyback. So now your tier 3 tower is starting to get hit as DC. So stuff indeed. They're going to TP back with the Lifestealer as well. 
And it looks like VP going to be more content to just go take down Roche and not push the envelope. So they only use Dragon Form, but it'll still be up for a pretty long time. So pretty much everything up on both sides. Oh, no, no, uh, oh, wait, they just used Cosmic for Roche. But here they go. Yeah, that just got scouted out as well. Dubu's in the area. They have Global as well. And I'm walking forward, they get the stun though. There's the Global Silence that comes out to try and turn it back around. Bulba hook shots in, able to catch on to Woden. Ferev is going to eventually be brought back down. And now Ramsey's hitting hard on top of all of these heroes from the Dire. DC is going to drop the blink away. We'll keep that Quap alive for the moment. But four other heroes dead for DC. Great fight for VP. Pacha got all his spells off. And no one. Great blink there to get that stun on the Batrider. Again, you see the problems of Batrider not having BKB. They they had that early, great early game prevented him from getting his BKB. You can see it on his quick buy next, but it's 30 minutes in. It's about the time that you want to have a BKB. But instead, he has, like, look how slowly he, like, went into the fight. He was, like, super scared. I mean, Nyx could have been on top of him. He could have gotten blink stunned. He could have gotten glimpsed back. He could have gotten vacuumed even. Like, all these things are just so problematic for the Batrider when he doesn't have a BKB. Yeah. It really is tough, and that's why it was such a great last pick of that Nyx Assassin. Um, man, and I, I'm sort of struggling now to figure out, like, where's this next item that you're going to be getting? Because, like, DK is going to have a, a Halberd, and now you also don't have, like, the right clicks from the Lifestealer as much that's going to make the difference if it's, like, a 5-on-5. Five five. Well, the ACs cancel out by Spencies. So yeah, that too. Invisibility. Well... Shiva's guard for the Quap. Quap 25 is the next stage. Okay. Uh, uh, then they can out. They can outlast the BKBs. Right now they can't. Like their whole team just got slaughtered inside the BKB. So get the 25 on Quap. Try and s survive until then. But it looks like the high ground push is coming right now. They have to deal with this. So lassoing into the T4s is generally the play. But I actually think they have enough armor that that might not even be enough. Now. 300 health talent as well for DK. Didn't go for the GPM signal that they want to try and end this game right now. They've already thrown the medallion on him. The wraparound call has come. Can they actually even do anything to this DK? And if they drop everything on the Aegis, what's left afterwards? Boba, Rev looking for that opening. They want to try and separate, make sure that that Static Storm doesn't come out and they have caught the Disruptor. No one manning up against Mason. He jumps inside the creep, keeping himself away for the moment. Sonic Wave is already out as well from Abed. Is he going to end up dropping down already so low? But the blink away does come and no one starting to fall as well. Boba is keeping that little bit of distance. He was disarmed for the moment, the Life Stealer, but now he's turning to fight, trying to bring down Ramses, trying to see if they can finally find something for themselves. And in fact, it is going to maybe be him dying. He is going to instead take down Boba from the right clicks. No one's back up. The Impale comes through. VP making it happen, but they have lost three as well. We'll see if DC can clean up here. At the very end is Nyx Assassin. You will Scepter to keep himself alive. No one turns. He's still hard to kill off. Now well, it looks like is going to get the TP out. Wow, how do they not lose additional heroes there? Uh, they did have the cheese, but it was on the dark scene, not the Sven. So Sven had no ages and no cheese, and he actually was caught in a really bad place because of where Disruptor is. They went in to try and save him, uh, but not enough, not enough items right there. A cheese pot would have maybe even been uh, like two sets of rags right there. Had sort of had that feel of a fight that was teetering on the edge of just like swinging one way or the other, and they kind of ended up. I mean, obviously a DC big win taking down the Sven, but. Um, still, they did end up losing the range racks. About as best you could hope, though, right? Yeah, they, they had to use a lot of the shrines, and they were fighting right underneath the shrine. So, Quap survived that fight, too. That was, that's pretty important for her, that she was able to blink in and survive until her next one. That's very bold, and she does have a lot of armor, but Sven is mega farmer. Oh, Pasha there, trying to catch the Bat Rider, but it doesn't end up happening. Solo and no one together on a warding mission. They'll maintain some good vision. And with no Aegis, Dyer's I mean, VP, do they take time to have a little bit of pause and get into their Tries. next items, or you just go again? Tries first. Okay. Dyer's bottom yeah, their BKBs are getting a little dangerously low, you mentioned earlier, whether or not it would be an issue. And it will be an issue if Quap continues to scale. Quap, surprisingly, has only died one time this game. 
up on Onbed, but he's still quite a bit away from a level 25. Dyer's top shrine is under well, attack. take a look. Like you said, those shrines are fallen. There's actually no one right in front, and he is going to go for the stun immediately. Dubu is here as well. The global comes out, and actually the turnaround. They have lifesteal here as well. Bulba is able to separate them on the other side, and it's actually going to be Disruptor dropping the static storm onto a BKB Abed. He's alive for the moment. Lifesteal is still being contained, though. Can he get away? It's not going to happen. Forever is going to fall also. They do have buybacks if they want to use them. I don't know if VP want to push the envelope. Actually, going to jump forward and catch Quap. Is the stun going to be enough? No. Quap is able to blink away. And Cheese Eaten, that's the play now. They want to make sure that they take this other lane of barracks, or rather the melee barracks. Buyback. Boba, hook shot on cooldown, 20 seconds. No way for him to get there. So they force the buyback on the Bat Rider and then retreat back home. Oh no. Dreams of a BKB. Cheese for a buyback on Batrider, that's pretty worth it, yeah? I, I'd rather have BKB than neither of those. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't think worth it. That was that was a bait by them. They didn't. They thought they could kill the Quab because they have a lot of stun. Oh, they just had a simple four step. I guess, and global stun. Really prevent that from happening. Oh. And Sven was a technical strike, which DC were well aware of. Right. <laughs> Dubna now has been able to build into a full Solar Crest also, uh, which I don't think there is an answer for at this point. Abed, they're waiting. The stun comes out. I don't think that they can kill here. Uh, maybe with actually the DK showing up, but no, Abed's just going to pop BKB and blink away. Safe play. Speaking of five-second BKBs. <laughs> uh, we'll have that Maelstrom at least. You said, still no death. I mean, it, the next Roshan, if you don't end the game there, is that where things get a little bit testy for VP, or are they going to be pretty comfortable fighting even into the late game? I think fairly comfortable. They still have uh, room to grow on the DK. DK's 25 is also really, really good. But they are looking to end the game right Ooh. now. As you mentioned, with the health talent versus the TPO, you know they're going to try to end the game. This is pretty big. DC knew that they were there. They dropped this ward down in vision of the sentry. And so they were able to stay back, make sure they didn't get picked off. No one gets open wounds, but no damage dealt, so we can blink away. Power still, to rather. Barrack's still standing. A good stun comes out, breaking it out. Bulba jumps in as well. He's in a little bit of trouble. Abed's jumped into everybody and, well, might need to blink away in a second since he's already being slowed down. They don't find the secondary stun. No way to do it through that BKB. I think that was a big mistake by Mason. He didn't kill the Observer War with Rage. That Observer War gave no one division to stun him as he blinked in. Oh, no. And now a triple kill for Ramses. Yeah, they're just blowing him up. And with no buybacks online, what was looking like a, on the verge of a comeback has been crashed back to reality. 16,000 net worth lead in Griming as it's a second lane of barracks and maybe even a third. Better game for them this, this game. One of the problems with playing as VP, you don't exactly know what heroes are in what position. So the last technique did render this Batrider fairly useless. I would say even more than Carapace. It was his vendetta, just running around, popping the smokes, making the fights incredibly difficult for DC to take. Also, it ruined, it ruined the early pick qualm. So, nice uh, switch up for Virtus Pro, and of course, solid play from 